our next guest is John Paul with us here today in MBRF podcast. I'm so happy to have him here with us. John Paul is MCO Leads General Manager uh, for Specialty Care and San Furry. How are you? Yeah, I'm very good. Hello, everyone. Very fine. Thanks a lot. It's good to have you here with us. Thank you. Thanks for the invitation. So through the day, we've been talking a lot about AI. From you, we want to hear how can AI enhance the drug discovery process? Well, as in every sector, actually, AI yeah. is really a revolution. Um, I mean, of course, internally, I mean, in the company, I mean, for every company, I mean, this is really helping us, for example, to improve our manufacturing practice. Using AI has allowed us to, uh, with an 80-85% accuracy in our forecast, to really limit uh, out of stock and shortages, which have been so important during COVID 100%. time, for example. And so, I mean, yeah, it has a lot of different applications. Now, one of the most important applications, of course, is how can we use AI to accelerate the development uh, of new molecules and of new yes. treatments? And actually, uh, really now, AI tools has really allowed us to gain time in terms of screening new molecules, in terms of making sure that these new molecules are targeting the right segment, the right way of treating, and of course in the clinical studies actually. And uh, you know, I mean, we have a very complex registration pathway. I mean, uh, once you have developed a molecule, I mean, to its availability for patients, there is a very long uh, way. I mean, forward and at the regulation, you need to have a certain number of clinical studies involving uh, thousands of patients. And of course, using AI, using AI is going to accelerate as well and Make probably, I mean, to help us absolutely. I mean, to uh, uh, with always the same objective, it is to bring new treatments which are so much needed by patients as soon as possible to these patients uh, and so to shorten the time to bring it to them. And maybe as well reduce the cost, I can imagine as well, yeah? So of course, because as you will limit time, obviously yes. you will limit the cost. As you will be more effective in selecting the molecules, you will also limit the cost. For example, I mean, so far, one or two molecules out of 100 being screened will make it to the treatment. Yeah. So obviously, I mean, this takes time, this costs money. Of course. And using AI will really help us to target better and to accelerate the development. Okay, and what challenges, uh, John, do you, do you, does the industry uh, go with, with the delivering innovation? Well, this is partly what I was mentioning. I mean, um, to create a new treatment, it takes years. It can take, it can take 10, 15 years, actually. Without the AI, yeah. Uh, and even with AI, I mean, we are not going to, because, I mean, there, there is any way you need to test this product, right? Okay. So you're going to test it eventually with models which are going to be so faster. So even with AI, it may get rejected or of course. Oh, okay. of course because you never know when you start developing a molecule if it will make it to the end in terms okay. of efficacy in terms of safety gotcha. uh, which is or i would say first in terms of safety and then of efficacy yeah uh, ai is going to help us actually to accelerate and probably to develop better models which will help us uh, to uh, to improve our capacity to select well the molecule and to take it now i mean the key challenges are first yes the time to development anyway the number of patients you need to include in clinical studies to give it significance and to have something which you can, yeah. after actually a, a proof of concept, you can propose to regulatory bodies. Cost, yeah. it costs between two to four billion euros wow. to develop a new molecule. Sanofi is investing yeah. six billion per year wow. in research and development. I mean, out of 10 years, it's 60 billion euros wow. invested in research and development. Now, give me two or three other industries which are spending over 10 years 60 billion euros in researching new treatment. I mean, there are not that many, right? Yeah. And probably there are two or three uh, which are, uh, I mean, investing as much as this. But with one difference is that on our side, these 60 million euros do not give a certainty to discover something. True. I mean, there is a big risk of uncertainty of, again, having a molecule that you are going to work on during few years and then just a year before taking it to market, then it fails in a clinical study because of whatever reason. And then you stop it and you have lost 10, 12 years. And then you have to start over. With and you start over system. again with a new molecule, right? Yeah. So, um, and the last is obviously, I mean, more and more you need to have some targeted therapy. I mean, we talk about geni genetic therapy, genic and so on. I mean, because today to, we are not searching anymore to discover new treatment in hypertension or uh, in hypercholesterolemia because I believe doctors today and patients have everything they need at their disposal. But you need, I mean, you are searching for new, really individualized therapy, I mean, to target certain type of cancer or uh, to, to treat certain type of multiple sclerosis or to treat rare disease. I mean, there are so many rare disease 
kids not having treatments available today. So this is becoming more and more difficult, more and more precise, and you use, you use different kind of technology and it becomes a really high tech industry. I mean, to be able to discover this new treatment, which will change the life of patients. 100%. It's good to hear the importance of AI in the industry of enhancing the drug discovery. Uh, John Paul, thank you for being with us here today. Thank you for being uh, part of the MBRF uh, podcast and giving us all this insightful uh, information when it comes to uh, medicine. No, it was a pleasure. Thanks a lot. Have a beautiful rest Thank of you day. very much. Thank you as well. Thank you. Thank you.